and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren, and today I am going to be looking at a Fat Files from the Fat Electrician. Uh, modern art is CIA propaganda. Was Jackson Pollock a fed? I don't remember much about Jackson Pollock. I learned, I mean, I can recognize a Pollock-esque art piece like I know what it looks like but like I do know that I learned about him at some point and I remember nothing I remember nothing at all because of course I don't so that's what that's about I'm gonna give a quick shout out to some channel members so thanks to Pterodactylus thanks to Joe Fravel uh thanks to Jerry Grove so thank you all so much for supporting the channel in that kind of way um it also help if you can't support uh by being a member uh you can leave a comment, a like, subscribe, all of those things help as well. But if you are a member, there are certain things that you can get early. Um, and of course you get the shout outs, which is, I, I don't know, maybe fun. Um, I'm curious about this. I have no idea. Like was Jackson Pollock a fed? I mean, Frank Sinatra apparently was un in tight with the mob. So like who even knows with some of these people? Let's go. Nobody saw coming. I think I like modern art now. In a turn of events that absolutely nobody saw coming, I think I like modern art now. Okay. Today we're talking Some about of it's interesting. And the historically supported objective fact that the CIA used it as a psychological operation to defeat communism. That, that's not a joke. Just so we're on the same page, I keep saying modern art, and I'm going to keep saying modern art, but more specifically, I'm talking about abstract expressionism, which is a subcategory of modern art. So for okay. this, think of it as like the Jackson Pollock type stuff. You know, the stuff you look at and you're like, wow, that's worth $200 million, and I'm pretty sure my three-year-old could do it. That type of art. And to be completely honest with you, I had every intention of this just being an eight to ten minute video of me talking smack about modern art and how dumb I think it is. And over the course Fair. of researching for this video, I have had a complete 180 change of heart. Not only do I think that modern art is pretty cool now, I was so compelled that I went out and bought my own piece of modern art. That's that looks really cool. Is. And we're going to get into it right after a word from our sponsors. This video is brought to you by Zaka Life Go Ball. Honestly, there are certain things with modern art that people are like, it's just a streak of blue. And but it's like, but when you actually look into the actual history of it, it's of the way that the artists did it, use specific brush strokes or like they invented a new kind of pigment or something. And it's like, yeah, it's blue, but no, you couldn't do it. It is a full spectrum hemp oil recovery bomb that you can put on any type of athletic injury and it's going to work better than any other type of ointment that you've ever tried. Hmm. I've been using it for over a year and whether it's old chronic injuries flaring up again or new and exciting injuries, this stuff helps either way. They're a small business cool. based right here out of America. All their products are made here. So if you want to check them out, I'll have a link in the description down below. Let's get back to the video. All right, let's just okay. the top. World War II ends. The Cold War pretty much immediately starts, right? We split Germany right down the middle. We've got East Side versus west side just like biggie and tupac but instead of rappers we have communism versus capitalism they are going to be competing at i really like that piece that's such a cool piece i would never be able to afford something like that but it's so cool looking i'm gonna check his description later to see if he's gonna like or if he like you know uh links the artist or whatever because that's that looks so cool. Literally everything under the sun. Okay, most people think about Cold War and it's like, who has the best weapons? Who has more nuclear bombs? That's true, but there's also the culture war. America and the Soviet Union are competing against one another at absolutely everything possible. This is why we have awesome movies like Miracle, because America needs to beat the Soviet Union at high. That was a good movie. We need to win the most. That was a good movie. I really like Miracle. <laughs> it was the Miracle on Ice, I think. I. Either way, good film. Do recommend. Olympic and the cool thing about that movie, too, is they got like like a bunch of the hockey players or at least one. No, one of the hockey players was like in the movie was the son of the actual guy, which I thought was cool. And we have to have the best art and the best music and the best economy. It is and the best moon shoes on everything. Now, some of these cultural battlefields are going to be way tougher than others. For example, the Olympics is going to be unbelievably tough because the USSR is just going to go in and give all their athletes funding. And it's going to be their full time job to train to be an Olympic athlete 30 hours a day on battlefields like this. There's not a lot the American government can do to ensure victory other than sit back, cross their fingers and hope to God a genetic freak of nature like Dan Gable wanders out of a cornfield and wins Olympic gold at wrestling without giving up a single point. So in things like sports, it's just going to be what it's going to be. It's a good old fashioned shootout. But on other battlegrounds that have a less defined rule set, America's going to cheat its ass off every way it can. Fair. Goddamn right. Because <laughs> we're goddamn Americans. Battlegrounds are art, 
and music. And America doesn't want to go toe to toe with the Soviets in, say, music on a category Fair. like classical music because, well, the Soviets are going to do the same thing they do with their Olympic teams. They're going to take a one year old that can barely walk, shove a violin in their hands, and make them play it 18 hours a day till they become the best violinist on earth by the time they're seven. And the American government basically has a strategy of, like, yeah, no, thank you. We're just going to take something the Soviets don't have and make it extremely popular. And that way, we win automatically. So the government, by way of the CIA, takes a bunch of money and funnels it into the jazz industry. They take the best artists like Louis Armstrong and okay. send them on global tours all around Europe and every other country they can get into, showing cool. off this new style of music and making it popular across the globe. And it's I love that. That's awesome. And it's like, also, it's like, you know what? Because Louis Armstrong, God tier music. He was so, he was so, so good. <laughs> and like jazz itself, is in a real is a really really cool type of music you know of course and it led to blues and rock and roll and all that so like extra extra awesome it's like and i like that one of the reasons that louis armstrong became as popular as he did is because the u.s government was petty I i'll take it it's something that the soviets just aren't going to be able to compete with and jazz ends up inspiring rock and roll and then rock and roll ends up inspiring metal and next thing you know it's 1991 and metallica is having a concert in the ussr with 1.6 million people in attendance and three months later the ussr falls coincidence i think I not, think not. they have the same exact strategy with art okay what are the soviets good at they're good at the traditional stuff that old school realism okay which let's be honest kind of not super needed anymore ever since we invented fucking cameras so the american government is like well what do we have that's different let's back that we are gonna back modern art which is abstract expressionism abstract expressionism is an artistic movement that emerged in the 1940s and 50s that focuses on shared curiosity and the utilization of abstraction as a means to express and or elicit emotion through artistic works where it's literally just art for the sake of art. That's literally the definition of abstract expressionism. It's just doing it because you want to do it, because you're expressing yourself through some medium in some fashion. Oh. And girl, it does work. Like, dude, I have a piece of art somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where I put it at this point, but I I painted it because I was like, I was so, I was angry and hurt and sad. And it was like all of these things that I was feeling at the time. And I just like, painted a little vase or something that just kind of got it out there and I felt so much better it's like it was like it does work it does in fact it, it like just flinging paint on something angrily can in fact make you happy if you want to see that let me know in the comments that piece of painting that I did if I can find it, <laughs> I will put a picture up or something. And that's where you get things like Jackson Pollock paintings. He's just expressing himself. Now, that doesn't sound like that big of a deal. However, it is a humongous deal because that's exactly the type of thing that you can't do over in the Soviet Union, pursuing a passion project to make a living. Now, can you be an Fair. artist? Absolutely. You could be an artist in the Soviet Union and get by just fine, provided that you're exclusively willing to paint hyper-realistic pictures of our glorious leader. And if you get bored with that, you're probably allowed to paint some pictures of our astronauts not landing on the moon first. Or maybe <laughs> Although I do, I will say, with these, like, portraits and stuff, have you seen the thing with King Charles? I mean... I mean... There are ways, even if you are painting very specific, very specific things for very specific people that, you know, are supposed to depict them in a very specific way. There are ways to get around it and make them look like a devil. Maybe if you get really bored, you could paint some muscle mommy holding a shovel or maybe a bunch of workers returning home from the fields, but they all better have fucking smiles on their faces. So that's the angle that the U.S. government's going to take. They're going to show off modern art because modern art is nothing other than art for the sake of art. It is a symbol of freedom. It's not this tired ass stuff the Soviets are doing, this this take a picture of me, but do it with paint nonsense. All their artists over there with their, their techniques and their well-refined skills. No, this is America. We're going to throw shit at the wall and we're going to win anyways. I mean, I mean, paint at the canvas. We're going to throw <laughs> paint at the canvas and we're going to win anyways. How yeah. Do you know when you're done with a painting? How do you know when you're done making love? Oh, when you wash your penis in the sink and go to bed. If we can't dazzle them with our intellect, we're going to baffle them with our bullshit. So that's the official plan of the U.S. government. All we have to do is make this shit pop. It still looks cool, though. Like, look, I'm sorry. Like, I... <laughs> I mean, you know, this could be almost anything. It could be city at night, but like it could also just be like it's a quirk. You know, it, it's it could be anything you want it to be. And it just looks really cool. 
some of the modern art stuff, I'm like, I, it, it doesn't speak to me. But stuff like this, though, I think it really does. And I just think it's just chaos and it looks like electrons everywhere. And I'm just like, how? It looks cool. I like it a lot. Somehow. How are they going to do it? That's easy. Copious, copious amounts of taxpayer money. So that's what the U.S. government does. Right after World War II, 1946-ish, they just start pumping money into modern art, trying to get as many eyes on it as humanly possible and making it seem as cool as possible. And it was not well received pretty much by anybody. Even the art community was divided. Half the art community hated this stuff, okay? They felt like it undermined the rest of art, which makes sense, right? You spent your whole life developing this skill set. You make beautiful paintings. And then out of nowhere, here comes this Jackson Pollock guy in his drip phase, and he's just fucking overhanded paint at a canvas not even bothering to pick the dead flies up out of it and all of a sudden he's more famous than you are it's absurd and that's just the criticism they're getting from their own community once the church going more conservative crowd gets a hold of this shit they lose their mind they the more reason to make it more popular <laughs> Fuck them folks. I fucking hate it. One of the many tools Good. of the devil. Because you gotta realize from this like church going conservative viewpoint, the majority of artists, generally speaking, have always been more left leaning, which is completely fine. But in this instance, the majority of these abstract expressionist artists that are blowing up are like borderline communist sympathizers or some of them are even self-proclaimed communists i mean jackson pollock worked on a May Day float depicting the workers overthrowing wall street like they have some pretty controversial political opinions so from the perspective of this church going fuck wall street is literally a bunch of commies trying to destroy art and they're using our tax dollars to do it we can't allow this to happen it's a slippery slope first you let them call this art then they're going to be having concerts called woodstock and putting flowers in their hair and smoking weed and having unprotected sex and then forrest gump's girlfriend's going to get aids it's just it's going to ruin the entire world okay to be Bye. fair they weren't actually worried about jenny but there was a bunch of conspiracy theories going around and one of the biggest ones was that because a lot of the artists doing this type of art were communist sympathizers is that this weird abstract art form was some way for them to convey secret messages back to the soviet union maybe these were like maps of secret u.s military i mean they kind of look like colorblind tests don't they the installations and they were all spies gathering intel and this is how they shared it back to the ussr absolutely no merit to it whatsoever but those were the types of things that people were saying so due to the pretty violent backlash from all directions the u.s government has to abandon this project and quit putting money into it almost immediately so now the U.S. government is in this situation where they have something that they want to do, but literally none of their constituents want them to do it. So clearly, they're not going to do it. Not going to, not going to. Mm -mm. Video's over. That's it. The end. No, I'm just fucking kidding. Uh, obviously, they're going to use the CIA and do it anyways, and then just not tell anybody about it, because... That's just how the government gets down, apparently. So in yep. 1950, the CIA helps fund and set up this new organization called the CCF, the Congress for Cultural Freedom. And this isn't just for art. This is going to be a gigantic shell corporation that the government pumps money into to okay. attack everything communist in culture. This is going to be an anti-communist propaganda making machine. At its peak, the CCF operated in over 35 different countries. They owned and wow. published over 30 different magazines. They owned entire news outlets. They're promoting anti communist books music art intellectuals anything they can do to fight the communist ideology they're doing and they're funneling it all through the ccf and this was deemed so successful overall that the cia website actually says and i quote the congress for cultural freedom is widely considered one of the cia's most daring and effective cold war covert operations wow so the ccf is huge but we're focusing on art and art has a unique issue in that modern art is already deemed super controversial so they don't want the ccf to come out and support it directly so they have to figure out a way to support it indirectly so the cia goes out and they're like okay well we're gonna get all these art foundations that already exist to work with us Unfortunately, Unfortunately, most of them didn't want to work with the CIA because <laughs> well, A, they're a bureaucratic nightmare, and B, yeah. most of them didn't like modern art. So at this point, the CIA is like, fuck it, we'll just make our own art foundation. So they go and they approach like a bunch of super wealthy people in New York City, and they're like, hey, start up an art foundation. We'll do all the work. We'll do all the paperwork. We're just going to funnel a bunch of money and art through this foundation. I'm sure you'll end up getting like tax write-offs or something. So all the rich Yeah, yeah, you'll like, get something. Dope. Absolutely, go ahead. And they do this like 50 times. They Put my name on stuff. Network of phony art 
art foundations where they use that to just funnel wow. money directly into modern art. Okay, they're funding the artists, they're giving away rewards, they're buying the artwork, they're donating it. Then they go to the museums and they get the museums in on it. Now the museums are going to be disproportionately showing modern art more than anything else, inflating its popularity. But that's not where it stops because now the CCF can get involved. Now that it's like two to three degrees removed, we're gonna bring the CCF in with their 20 magazines and their news outlets, and we're gonna have the magazines start publishing articles about all these modern artists and how great all this art is. And then, if any art Sneaky. critics wanna have their opinions published in any of these 20 magazines or covered by the news, they better have the right fucking opinion about modern art. So the CIA forces this into the mainstream and it's everywhere and all the media all the time and everybody sees it. And this is like the peer pressure effect, right? You see this in all the okay. magazines, all the art critics love it. Eventually you're like, shit, am I the only person that thinks this is dumb? If everybody else likes it, I don't want to be the only uncultured swine that looks at something that I think my three-year-old can do and like doesn't understand the deeper meaning. So I'm just going to lie and pretend and say that I like it too, just so I'm part of the cool kid group. So I'm and I do appreciate, though, like how some of the modern artists took that mentality, the like kind of uber pre pretentious, because, of course, it becomes pretentious. I do appreciate how like a lot of the modern art did. There was one person recently who did something amazing. I like I thought it was so fucking funny. They <laughs> they gave the museum a blank canvas. They had done nothing to it. And it was called like, it was called something like, I'm going to take your money and run. And like, they, they told them up front, that was the name of the piece it was like, I'm going to take your money and run. And they took the money, gave them a blank screen and like dipped, like they did. It, it was like, Hey, we, it's art. <laughs> it's a statement piece. <laughs> like I'm it's... deep and thoughtful and sophisticated. So people started to like modern art. It's like candy corn, okay? I know that candy corn tastes like shit. I've never met a single person in my entire life that actually liked candy corn. Yet, somehow, some way, every October, it's absolutely everywhere. It's got the best marketing on the planet for no apparent reason. I don't even know what company makes candy corn, yet it's everywhere all the time for the entire month of October. It just makes everything in your mouth taste bad for, like, a long time after you eat it. Fuck, candy corn's got to be a psyop too. It's got to be like <laughs> nuclear waste. That's how the government gets rid of it. I have no, no idea. No, but no, anyway, no, sorry, I'm, I'm getting distracted. Now I can't prove that candy corn is a psyop yet. I'm gonna look into it. I'm upset about this now. But we do know for a fact that modern art was a psyop, or at least its rise to fame was a psyop. And we know this because in 1966, the New York Times had found out that the CIA helped make the CCF and they ran it as a story. Now, they only knew about the CCF. They didn't know about all the other extra stuff that they did in the art community with the founding of all these different shell art mm. foundations. That didn't yeah. come out until the 1990s. But it did Dang. get the ball rolling for a bunch of conspiracies because now the art community is super skeptical of abstract expressionism. Now, it just didn't make sense from their point of view. You know, usually, typically speaking, it's almost common knowledge that most artists don't get super famous and until after they die. Yet somehow all the major abstract expressionists, Jackson Pollock, de Kooning, Rothko, these guys were all superstars during their lifetime. They had multiple page spreads in magazines. They were making tons of money. They were rich. They were famous. It just made zero sense, historically speaking. Sounds because like they're jealous. This, a lot of people in the art community thought for sure the government had to be behind it. In 1984, <laughs> famous art critic Max Kuzlov said that it was- I love, it's like, uh, you know, when you're right, you're right, I guess. <laughs> like, you- was, quote, a benevolent form of propaganda. And here's the kicker with this. We don't know to what degree the artists that benefited the most from this actually knew that they were being used by the CIA because as far as they probably knew, they just received a bunch of money from some art foundation owned by some oh, rich guy. Oh, they works for them. rich guy was actually working with the CIA. On the flip side of that, maybe they did know. The well, it also sounds like half the rich people didn't know they were working with the CIA. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. Like, they, you know. Do you really think they looked into it that deeply? They wanted to put their name on a thing and get a tax write-off. Like... Time. And some people cite the fact that Jackson Pollock later in his life denounced communism as evidence of that. However, in my personal opinion, well, I don't really buy it. I think these guys had no clue. And I think that Jackson Pollock denounced communism later in life because he got famous and rich as fuck. I mean... And I think that... Well, also, I think that maybe he... I mean, that, that might have had something to do with it. The fact that he suddenly is, you know he's famous and rich so he's like oh well, actually this is nice but it's also possible that he kind of saw like later in life he had time to see the effects of communism right like he had like because at the beginning he would have maybe he was just looking at it like oh well they want things on an equal level like 
go go equality fuck the one percent you know but then as he like as time went on and he saw what communism did to people he realized it was bad (laughs) i don't know i'm just saying i can really really see especially in the early days where people might have been more pro communist. Like it, it makes more sense if it like it's this brand new idea wherein, you know, the workers, you know, the the every every man is well every man will be a king, you know, like that's the idea, right? Equality. It sounds great. And then you look at what happens. And then you look at the reality of the situation. So uh, my point is, it's possible that at the beginning of all of this, he was being he was looking at it in an idealistic light, and then he saw what happened and was like, actually, this sucks. Denounced. Also, he got rich. But you know. I mean, the dude was selling paintings for eight thousand dollars, which if you adjust for inflation is like ninety-five grand. Okay. He had a lot of money, and let's just call a spade a spade. Every young college kid wants to share the wealth, and then they get a little bit older and it becomes their wealth that needs to get shared and then their opinions change. Now, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. However, I hope I'm right for a couple of reasons. One, I personally just find it funny that the US government was using unwitting communist sympathizers to fight against communism by that showing is off funny. all the freedoms they have because they didn't live under communism. To me, that's art. And B, and also another reason that I think I'm correct is that I think the CIA knew that this art couldn't be propaganda. I mean, they were gonna use it as propaganda and they knew that, but it was very important with the creation of the art that the artist had no idea that it was being used for propaganda. It needed to that be makes a sense. true, authentic expression of that person because that's what made this art so effective is that we were showing off freedom, the freedom of self-expression. That's what abstract expressionism is all about. Oh my God. So if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, what I'm trying to tell you is that when most people think of the Cold War, they think of an arms race between America and the Soviet Union. Who can have the most nukes? Who can have the most fighter jets? Who can come up with the best, most creative, efficient way to kill the enemy? But at the end of the day, that was a moot point from the get-go because there was always mutually assured destruction between America and the USSR should it devolve to a hot conflict. And what actually won the Cold War was the culture war. Because when it came time for the USSR to fall in 1991, they didn't want to drag America down with them because everybody in the Soviet Union was wearing blue jeans, drinking Pepsi, listening to Metallica, and Gorbachev himself was doing fucking Pizza Hut commercials. There was a, I don't know if you've seen the, um, the History of the World According to Tetris song, but there's a, there's a bit at the end where it's like, and in the end, well, don't. it's like, and in Red Square, well, don't despair. There's Levi's and McDonald's there. And it's like, the U.S. gave us crystal meth and Yeltsin drank himself to death. It's a whole song. You should look up the history of the world according to Tetris. And it's amazing. Point B. That's Gorbachev. They didn't want to destroy America because they wanted to be like America, or at the very least, they recognized the fact that the world was a better place with America in it. The Cold War wasn't won by having the most nuclear warheads. It wasn't won by putting a man on the moon first. It was won with blue jeans, junk food, music, and art. And to quote JFK, art is not a form of propaganda. It is a form of truth. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Quack, bang out like a week ago i would have done nothing but made fun of modern art now look at me look at this it's beautiful I love it's it. really it's cool <laughs> i like what it has to say <laughs> i like what it has to say too that's pretty good <laughs> all right so i i do like i said i've got a piece that i made that if you want to see it i will be happy to share a picture i also have a piece that i f- that i have that i found that looks really really cool i really like this uh this print that i have um i would probably not be able to show it like here because there's green in it and it would end up looking a little bit weird but if you want to see my my you know little piece of modern art that i have um i would be more than happy to share those pieces i think they're really cool and again i think modern art has its place and i really do think it it is it can be so cathartic to just if you're you know just to fling paint at something you're allowed to fling paint at you know it's 
can feel really good. <laughs> um, so I do recommend. I like it. I think it's cool. Um, and again, a lot of the stories behind some of the paintings that you think are wacky or ugly or weird or my three-year-old could put this red block on this you know, piece of like look into the stories behind them and like how the artists created them because a lot of the time there's something a lot deeper there than just what it ends up the end product looks like. It looks really simple, but half the time it's actually really complex and it did take a lot of effort. So I just think it's cool. And sometimes, again, you get someone who is just gonna play the system. Also fun. Also appreciate that. So anyway, my point is look up at the stories for some of these pictures. I feel like you won't be disappointed and you might have a new appreciation for it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.